the word of God reads, Now it came to pass, when the, in the days when the judges ruled, that there was a famine in the land. And a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to search in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. And the name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife, Naomi, and the name of his two sons, Melan and Shilion, Ephraites of Bethlehem, Judah. And they came into the country of Moab and continued there. And Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left and her two sons. And they took them wives of the women of Moab. The name of the one was Oprah, and the name of the other, Ruth. And they dwelled there about ten years. And Melon and Chilion died, also both of them. And the woman was left of her two sons and her husband. Then she arose with her daughter Laws, that she might return from the country of Moab. For she had heard in the country of Moab how the Lord had visited the people, his people, and given them bread. Wherefore she went forth out of the place where she was, and her two daughters-in-law with her. And they went on the way to return unto the land of Judah. And Naomi said unto her daughter-in-laws, Go return each other to your mother's house. The Lord deal kindly with you as ye have dealt, as ye have dealt kindly with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that ye may find rest, each of you, in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them, and they lifted up their voice and wept. And they said unto her, Surely we will return unto thee, unto thy people. And Naomi said, Turn again, my daughters. Why will ye go with me? Are ye there yet any more sons in my womb that they may be your husbands? Turn again, my daughters. Go your way, for I'm too old to have a husband. If I should say I have hope, if I should have a husband also tonight, and should also bear sons, would ye tarry for them till they were grown? Would ye stay for them from having husbands? Nay, my daughters, for it grieves me such for your sakes that the hand of the Lord is going out against me. And they lifted up their voice and wept again. And Oprah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clave unto her. And she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law is gone back unto her people, and unto her gods, return thou after thy sister-in-law. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee. For whether thou goest, I will go. And whether thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God, my God. Where thou diest, will I die, and there will I be buried. The Lord to do, do so to me. And more also, if aught but death part thee and me. Amen. 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 God bless you. For a few minutes, we want to take a thought from the 16th and the 17th verses of that chapter and focus on a subject, I won't turn back. I won't turn back. You need to declare that today. I won't turn back. Ruth is a very well-known passage of scripture, especially when we hear the name Boaz. Everybody remember the story about Boaz, but we're not going there today. But I want you to focus in on the point of Ruth refusing to go back to her own country. The word says that Naomi, the mother-in-law of Ruth, is in Moab, and she's about to return to her country of Judah. Naomi had lost her husband, Elimelech, who brought her to Moab because of a famine in the land. And Naomi lost her two sons, Melon and Kilion. Naomi has only her two daughter-in-laws and received word that the Lord had visited in the land, and Naomi lost her, and, and the Lord had visited in the land where the people, her people was, and it was giving them bread. In other words, the famine was over. Mm -hmm. Let me stop right there <clears throat> and talk about 
a scripture. Philippians 4.16. Philippians 4.16 says, But my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And then if we think about Psalms 37 and 5, it says, I have been young and now I'm old. Yet I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor a seed begging bread. God will always make provision for his people. Come on. God will always make provision for his people. Now I'm not hating on a limonac, nor am I hating on roof. But just make sure when you're moving, you're moving because of the provider not the provision. Make sure when you're moving, you're moving because of the provider, not just because of the provision. Amen. Ask yourself a question. Why are you going this way? Why am I going this way? Why am I moving? Did God tell me to move? Did the Holy Spirit lead me there? Am I just running after stuff? See, sometimes we get stuck. We move from one place to another because we're running after stuff. And we're not running after God. But when I think about the song, it says, I'm chasing after you. See, if I'm going to run behind something, I'm going to chase behind God. Make sure that you are moving because God has told you to move. The Bible tells us. In Proverbs 3, 5, and 7, that we have to trust the Lord with all of our heart. Lead not to our own understanding and all our ways to acknowledge God and He will direct our path. It says, in verse 7, it says, Be not wise in our own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. There's a lot of people walking around in their own wisdom, not godly wisdom. Chasing after this scheme and that scheme and this way and that way, but it's not God's way. Amen. Elimelech and Naomi, Elimelech left his land to go to Moab for provision. Now here is Naomi on the road back to her land because she heard that the Lord had visited him. Like I say, I'm not hating on them, but I don't know about you, but my word says that God is everywhere. <laughs> God will make provision for you right where you are. But that's their story. Naomi on the road with her two daughter-in-laws. And Naomi tells them to turn around. Go back. Go back to your mother's house. She said, may the Lord deal kindly with you. Otherwise, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord God be gracious to you as you have been to my son and me. Oprah and Ruth refused to go on Naomi's first plea for them to return. Naomi gives them a second plea. She said, but this time, this time she gave it to him with persuasion. She asked him a question, why, why would you go with me? I'm too old to have another husband. And if I had a husband tonight, could I bear a son? And if I bear a son, would you, would you wait on me until they were grown? Naomi said, for it grieved me such for your sakes that the hand of the Lord is against me. Naomi felt that just because she was going through what she was going through, that the hand of the Lord was against her. But don't allow what you're going to to take you there. God is still with you. Sometimes God allows us to go through the valley of the shadow of death. The word says, yea, though I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil because God is with me. Just because you're going through doesn't mean God has left you. Amen. The Bible says that they lifted up their voice. They wept. And Oprah kissed her mother-in-law. But Ruth played to her. Oprah said, I'm out of here. <laughs> I'll see you later. That, that, that was enough plea for Oprah. She said, I, I'm going back home. But the word says that Ruth played to her 
mother in law. Yes. If we look in the concordance, 1692, claim means to claim or hear, abide fast, follow close, hard after, to be joined together, keep, overtake, pursue hard, stick, take. Ruth claimed to her mother in law. Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave you. Don't make me go or return from following after thee. For wherever thou goest, I will go. And wherever thou lodgest, I will lodge. She said, Your people shall be my people, and thy God my God. Yes. See, the land of Moab was a land where they sacrificed idols, they didn't just serve the true and living God. See, Oprah decided to go back to the familiar. And that's what we do sometimes. God puts us on assignment. And because we don't know what's going to happen in the assignment that God has given us, we want to, mm, I don't know about that, Lord. See, I, I, I know about this. And I, and I know about but I don't know where you're sending me. But see, Oprah, she went back to the land of familiar. But Ruth said, no, I'm, I'm going to cleave. I'm going to cleave to my mother-in-law. There had to be something about Naomi. There had to be some light shining. See, that's why the word tells us we have to let our light shine. Let our light that men may see our good works, but glorify God in heaven. You have to watch what you're doing. You have to watch what you're saying. You have to watch where you're going. Because somebody's always looking at you. Ruth said, I won't turn back. See, that's the declaration we have to stand on. Once we are become born again believers, once we say we know Jesus and he has, we ask him to, we know him in the pardon of our sins. Once we say we've gone with you all the way, God, we can't turn back to the things of the world. That's the attitude we need to have in this day that we're living in. Ruth knew that Naomi did not have materialistic things. See, a lot of us, that's what we run behind. But Ruth knew Naomi lost her husband. She lost her sons. She felt like the Lord had turned his hand against her because she didn't have anything. She didn't have materialistic things, but she must have heard about the God that Naomi was serving. A God who was able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask of thing. We always want to chase behind. We don't want to get up in the morning and come to church, but if somebody said they're giving away a hundred dollars, uh, uh, some gift cards down at Walmart, uh, down on the other corner, uh, down on the beach, we don't get up early in the morning. Stand in line. Yes, Raise leads no shine. And we want to stand there. We'll wait on a hundred dollar gift certificate. We'll wait on a pay a hundred dollar pair of Jordans that we have to pay for now. But when the door opened on Sunday morning, we have to sit here and look. Oh, I wonder what oh, don't look like too many people coming today. But my God is able to do exceedingly abundantly. So if I'm gonna run after something, if I'm gonna run after somebody, I'm gonna run after the things of God. Because He's my healer, He's my deliverer, He's my strong tower, He's my waymaker, He's my
addictions that we decide to let go. Some of us have been delivered from some things, and because of what we're going through, because you don't see a way out, you ready to turn around and go back. Let us keep in mind 2 Corinthians 5 and 7 says, We walk by faith and not by sight. You can't go by what you see. Hallelujah. You can't walk by, follow the direction of the Holy Spirit and not the direction of your flesh. See, this flesh always want to feel good. They don't ever want to go through anything. But in order to get that oil out of that olive, it gotta be crushed. In order for that diamond and that gold to come shine, they gotta go through some fire. Glory to God. Follow the directions of the Holy Spirit. Let us go to Acts, the 20th chapter, the 22nd to the 24th verse. Let me show you something that Brother Paul did. In the 20th chapter of Acts, it says, Now behold, I go bound in the spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there, saying that the Holy Ghost witness in every city, saying that the bonds and afflictions abide me. But one none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus Christ. To testify the gospel, the grace of God. Paul did not know what was ahead of him. But he knew one thing. That the Holy Spirit was with him. He said he, the Holy Spirit is going to go with me. He said I can't allow none of these things to move me. You can't allow things to move. You can't allow what you don't know. You can't allow people talking about you to move you. Some of us are moving by what we see, not what, and what we feel. You know, it, but I, I just don't feel that in my spirit. Well, what spirit are you talking about? Are you talking about the Holy Spirit or just that feeling? Well, you know, I don't feel. But we don't worry about feelings when it comes to the materialistic things. But when somebody says, well, I, I want you to sing a song. I, I, I just want you to pray a prayer today. Can, can you leave the vote? You know, I, mean, I, I don't, the, the Lord ain't told us to feel. Mm. Mm. We want to feel so much when it comes to the things of God. Right. But when it comes to the things of the world, don't take us for the drop of dime. I'm going, where, where, where is that? Right. Where are you giving away the food at? Right. Okay. Well, where, where is that? They got some clothes for free? Right. Don't talk about the government cheese. What? 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 My God, we run it. We run it. Moving by what we see yes, yes. and not by the Holy Spirit. Yes. My plea today for you, for us, not turn around. God has just been too good to us. Thank you, Jesus. Too good to us. Keep pressing toward the mark of the higher calling. This is just a season that we're in. This is just a season. That you may be in. Seasons don't last. That's right. Seasons change. That's right. That's Nothing. It don't last forever. Right. Nothing is forever but eternal tea. All right. Nothing. Right. Nothing is forever. Remember, Hebrews 13 and 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Forever. Forever, forevermore. Jesus don't change. We change. Our circumstances change. Our conditions change. Sometimes we up, sometimes we down. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's, But God is good, what? All the time. Glory to God. Don't allow that sickness to turn you back to that drug addiction. Don't allow that debt to turn you back to that means of making money in an ungodly manner. Don't allow that frustration to turn you back to the table of overeating and overindulging. Or turn you back into impulsive shopping. Don't allow your circumstances to turn you back. Take inventory on how God has blessed you. Take inventory on how God has healed you. Take inventory on how God has delivered you. Take inventory on how God has kept you. Yes. Just look back. Some of us don't have to go. 
God delivered me. God brought me through. God healed me. God saved me. See, if God did it before, God will do it again. If he did it before, he'll do it again. Just think about Jesus. When he hung on that cross, and before he even got to that cross, some might say he could have called 10,000 angels to save him. See, he, the Bible says he seats at the right hand of God. But he died for your sins and he died for my sins. He didn't do nothing wrong. We did it. Yes. We're guilty. Yes. But guess what? He could have said, no, God. He, he cried out. He said, Father, why have thou forsaken me? But he didn't, he didn't turn back. He stayed right there. He went right through the judgment halls. People talked about it. People lied on him. They spit on him. Put thorns in his head. Nails in his head. Nails in his feet. Nails in his leg. But what did he do? Word says he gave up the ghost. Nobody took it from him. He gave it up because he wanted to save us. He wanted us to have that life and have it more abundantly. And when I think about that, I can't turn back. Yes. I won't turn back. Because God's been too good to me. Yes. If you don't already know Jesus in the Bible, come on over and try him. Yes. He's better than good. He's real, 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 real good. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. No, every day won't be sunny. Every day won't be perfect. Every day won't be peaceful. The word says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy, that unspeakable joy, is coming back. I looked up the words to the song. This is a more modern day from the one I was thinking about. It says, I won't turn back. I won't turn back. Why? Because God has been good to me. Jesus has set me free. No! I won't turn back. I don't know about you today, but I've made up my mind. I'm not turning back. I'm not throwing in the towel. I'm not giving up. See, you got to think like Ruth. Ruth saw something in Naomi. She saw that God that was in Naomi. And because of her obedience and wanting to cling to Naomi, Ruth ended up with Boaz. But see, some of y'all ain't going to get Boaz because y'all want to stay with Rick. Forgive me, I'm not calling out anybody. Y'all want to stay with Tricky Rick. Oh, See? Okay. Oh. Y'all want to stay with Cleophas, who out there being a neighborhood pharmacist. Okay. See, God, God, God's been good to you. Oprah couldn't see that. Oprah couldn't see that God that was in Naomi. And let me share a little personal testimony with you. Thank God, uh, coming up in April of next year, it'll be 10 years I'm married to my husband. Between the engagement and the wedding, he lost his job. See, some of women would say, oh, no, mm -mm, I'm not married. I'm, 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 I'm going back. I'm going back. At least, uh, at least uh, Cleopas could buy me a hamburger. He can't buy, he ain't got no job. Okay. He can't pay no bills. Wow. And the day, two days after we got married, he started working a job. Amen. A year later, sickness came our way. He couldn't work again. But the Lord opened up some windows from heaven that we don't have room enough to receive. I tell God, thank you for allowing me. My husband, he was in his hospital bed and he looked at me and he was crying. He said, are you going to leave me? I said, I can't leave you. I love you. Why are you doing what you're doing? Is it for love? Is it for lust? Is it for greed? Is it for fame or fortune? Right. And because, I truly believe because I stood and I had faith and I believe God, that he's still yet blessing us. Yes. Yes. We never lost the house, never lost a car payment, never had to worry about anybody feeding us. God made provision for us. Yes. Thank God for a place of work that understood my going and coming could always be at work, but I thank God. Yes. Don't turn back. If God put you there, and you know that was God put you there, there's going to be some rain somewhere.
some days. It's going to be some clouds some days. It's going to be some storms some days. In your workplace, in your relationships, wherever God has sent you. But don't you turn back. Take inventory how God has been good to you. I won't turn back. No, no, no. I won't turn back. God has been good to me. Jesus has set me free. No, no, no. I won't turn back. Like I said, if you don't know Jesus and a part of your sin, this is an opportunity to you for you right now that you can come know the Jesus that I'm talking about. And I guarantee once you come to know him and the part of your sin, you ask him to forgive you for your sins. You won't turn back because you'll see how good he is. He said he'll always be there. He'll never leave you, nor forsake you. I admonish you to go to Romans 10, 9 and 10. That says if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You want a place to go one day. You want your soul to go and be with Jesus. And that's the only way. You have to be saved. You have to be born again. And once you do that, don't turn back. I won't turn back. Because God has been good to me. God bless you. God keep you. If you need us, if you need prayer, the pastor has offered his phone number several times on the previous uh, video. Please call him. Let us know if there's anything we can do for you. We're here for you. God bless you. I love you. Save